glad to be here. Um, I was talking to a real elderly man. I guess he was in his 80s. And uh, I said, it's uh, glad to see you. He said, it's glad to be seen. I said, I'm glad you're here. He said, me too. At my age, I'm glad to be anywhere. And uh, well, I hadn't quite got that age yet, but I'm glad to be here. And uh, I very, very seldom uh, out of my pulpit on um, Sunday morning. There's just been a few times since I've been there for 32 years that I have um, been out of the pulpit on Sunday morning anyway. Several Sunday nights I've taken off starting meetings or whatever. Uh, but um, very, very rarely on Sunday morning, uh, I'm out of the pulpit at my church. We have a young man preaching this morning for us. Is he, is he 11, 20, is that, it's 12, 20. He's done. I hope he's done by now. <laughs> and I know my people will be glad he'd be done by now. And... Uh, we have some folks like to get started, you know, uh, it's 11 o'clock sharp, leave 12 o'clock dull. You have anybody like that? <laughs> but anyway, I'm grateful for the years God's given me there at Midway Baptist Church. That's the second church I pastored. I pastored one for about three years, a little over three years. Or can I change that and say I... I was the preacher there. They never did let me pastor that church, but uh, I'm grateful the Lord moved me uh, to where I'm at now. It's about 100 miles from my hometown. And uh, I'm grateful for the years that uh, the Lord has given me at Midway. We have um, three children. They are married. All of them have kids. we got five grandkids. And um, I'm grateful that my children live right around close to where I live at. And I like that. You may not like it. I like it. I like to see my kids every day. And I mean that. And I, if I've got a day that I'm going to take off, I, I want to take it off with my kids. I just like that. We enjoy outdoors. We enjoy deer hunting. And um, we enjoy fishing. By the way, behind the uh, motel where I'm staying at, I guess there's about a four-acre pond back there. And I asked the lady at the motel, I said, um, does anybody fish that pond? She said, why, sure. She said, just help yourself. And then I got to thinking, I said, well, does the game warden, you know, make? She said, oh, no, you will never be worried about that. But I've heard that before. And um, <laughs> so I called my son, and um, he said, Daddy, what you need to do is go by Walmart, get you a spinning rod, he said, you use it, and he said, then clean it up real good and carry it back. Get your money back. We have done something like that before several times. You ever needed a tool just for one job? I have many times, and I go to Lowe's, get that tool, and don't even take tag off of it. You know, use it, carry it right back, and say it didn't work, then repent, then repent, you know, and... Um, and uh, then going with life. But I appreciate my family. And uh, my, my son, my oldest son, plays the piano. And uh, him and his wife and my grandchildren sing. And uh, then my middle child, Caleb. Caleb is 29. Caleb takes after me. He don't do nothing. He can't sing. He can't play nothing. Uh, he, like me, he can't even cartoon. And... Um, I was listening to the preacher sing, and um, I always sing a lot low because I don't want nobody to hear me sing. Y'all know, y'all know, Brother Steve Dagenhart. You know, Brother Steve's been here. Steve's a great singer, and uh, we've preached together a lot of times. And we'll be standing there singing the songs, and he always leans over toward me, you know, trying to get me on the right, you know. I said, Brother Steve, you're wasting your time. Ain't no way in the world. I didn't figure all that out, but but I'm grateful for my children. My daughter, she goes to a, my best friend's church. Uh, she lives about 25 minutes from us. 
she got a good church, a great pastor, and I'm grateful that she's at, active in that church. And um, I'm just thankful for my family and my wife. has been my wife for 41 years, and um, she has not realized what a blessing I am to her yet. <laughs> and I try to remind her along the way, you know. But I'm, I'm grateful just to, I want to say a word about our church and... and um, uh, about our family. Open your Bible this morning to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter, as a matter of fact, there's really three different passages in the book of 1 Peter that seem like has um, uh, a tie, seem like they're just kind of weaved together. Here, This is something the Lord gave me uh, some time ago and... Um, I trust that God will help us this morning as we stand to try to preach His Bible. 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, verse 18, probably familiar scripture uh, for all of us, but I tell you what I have found out, one of the most difficult tasks of any preacher is to make new things familiar and familiar things new. That's the difficult in pastoring, preaching. But 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 18. For as much as you know that you will not redeem the corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who was verily who verily was foreordained for the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Look, if you will, in chapter 5 and verse number 7. The Bible says, Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth, for you. Now if you look back in chapter 1 and um, verse 4. The Bible says, To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. If you look carefully at these three different passages, there is a common thread that connects them, and uh, that is the word for you. I'd like to preach this morning by the help of our Lord on just for you. Just for you. In studying Simon Peter's life and uh, then looking at his writings, I have found out that Simon Peter is always himself. He never tries to be a John. He never tries to be a Nathaniel. Uh, he's never tried to be a Paul or any of the other characters and writers in our Bible. But wherever you find Simon Peter, Simon Peter is always himself. I have a problem. A lot of preachers, they seem like they want to be just like somebody else. Well, I, I found out a long time ago that God didn't want me to be like somebody else. He wanted me to be me. And I, I think... One other reason I like Simon Peter, and you probably won't admit it, but probably the reason you like Simon Peter, because he's up one day and down the next. Amen? One day he's uh, a preaching, next day he's a doubting. And the uh, next day he's denying. And it seemed like that Simon Peter's life is a, like, an, uh, like a roller coaster ride. And uh, it goes up and... Uh, then it comes down. But I'm grateful for the life of Simon Peter. 
I'll not deal with it this morning, but uh, whoever thought that God would be able to use Simon Peter? Whoever thought, there's Simon Peter, he's denying the Lord three times, and uh, no doubt um, uh, he, he was ashamed to even be associated with Christ. And now God has restored Simon Peter, and God has used Simon Peter my friend, the pen part of the Bible that we have this morning. I'm glad this morning that God is able to take you from your failures and take you even, my friend, from your sins. I'm glad that God is able, my friend, this morning to dust you off if you please. And God is able this morning to put you back, my friend, in service for Him. And I'm grateful that no doubt is the life of Simon Peter. Simon Peter, my friend, tries just to be Simon Peter. But in writing in his writings this morning, it seems like that he is very personal. Uh, I, I get mail and you do too. Uh, we, we are still getting mail. We've been living where we're at near about 19 years Near about, that's, that's slang, we've been there just, uh, you know, almost 19 years. And um, we, got, we may have to have an interpreter for these things, over with. Um, but we've been living there uh, pretty much 19 years, and, and I forgot what I was going to say. You ever done that? I mean, I, I do it, I do it all the time, amen? See, uh, me and my wife... I bring the Holy Ghost with me everywhere I go. And uh, we, we still get mail from those pre the previous house owner. Uh, they owned it 20-some years ago. And we're still getting mail from that, from them. And, uh, but then we all get mail. It, it doesn't say to anybody. It just says occupants, don't it? Not very personal at all, is it? What he's trying to say is, whoever goes to the mailbox, this is for you. You know, and uh, aren't you glad you don't get bills like that? But, uh, but Simon Peter is not writing to occupancy here. Although you and I this morning are included in this wonderful message by Simon Peter, but Simon Peter is very personal. He's not addressing this to occupancy, but he's addressing it to you. He's addressing it to me this morning. And that's how I want to approach this morning the message uh, here uh, from Simon Peter. There in our three texts, all of them have a common thread that kind of ties those three texts together. And certainly that is the two words for you. As we look this morning in our three texts, I want to say something this morning about just for you. You know, in at Valentine Day and and birthdays and and uh, just any day, uh, we sometimes will buy a card or buy a gift for our wife or your husband, and um, we uh, try to make that card sound as pretty as we can. And uh, sometimes I end my little saying, and, and I always put them out just for you. I'm grateful that there are some things that Peter has included here in this epistle just for you. There are three things we learn about our Lord as we look at these three texts. The first text I'll mention I read in, in verses 18 down through verse 20. Verse 20 says, Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you. If you read back up at verse 18 and 19, there, those verses are connected. And what Simon Peter is saying 
in those verses this morning that he is a sin bearer just for you. He died. He hung on the old rugged cross. He bore your sins. He bore my sins. He who knew no sin was made sin for you and I. Simon Peter is emphasizing a truth here. Simon Peter said, I want you to know why he came to die. He came to die just for you. Aren't you glad this morning that a long time before you ever arrived here and a long time before you was ever thought about, there was one that was going to come, my friend, and die. Pay the sin penalty of your sins and my sins uh, uh, there on a place called Calvary. And I'm grateful, my friend, that he died. Simon Peter said that he is a sin bearer. My friend, just for you this morning. Hey, by the way, I'm grateful, I'm grateful that he died for the pastor. I'm grateful that he died for Mrs. Teresa. I remember a few names. I'm glad that he died for those. I'm thankful for that. But I tell you what brings joy down to my heart is that he died for me. I'll tell you I'm grateful that he died for the world. I'm grateful that he died for the church. But Paul said that he gave himself for me. I'm grateful today that just for you he became a sin bearer just for you this morning. Notice here in our text, notice Simon Peter says in verse 19, he says that he is, uh, he is a pure substitute. He says, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Our sins demanded more than just another one like us to die. We had to have someone that would please God, someone that would satisfy the demands of a holy God. And I'm glad that Christ is a propitiation for our sins. I'm grateful that God was satisfied with the death of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul Peter said that He is a pure substitute. There in verse 19, uh, Paul talks about, uh, Peter talks about uh, a lamb without blemish and a lamb without spot. That word blemish there has to do with one's character. Uh, in other words, that is on the inside. And the word spot has to do with one's conduct. And that is on the outside. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, even Judas himself said that I find no fault with him. Simon Peter said that there is a sin bearer just for you this morning when you and I could never qualify when you and I could never stand justified. I'm glad there was one that qualified. I'm glad there was one without spot, without blemish. I'm grateful there was one without sin this morning that became sin for you and I, that you and I may be able to know Him and a free pardon of sin. I'm grateful this morning, my friend, for uh, the character, the character of our Lord. All through our Bible, words are given to express our Lord. I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but I never thought about it to have thought about it. You'll get that later on. But nowhere in the Bible does it say that Christ is love, love, love. But we know He is love. Nowhere in the Bible does it ever say that He's grace, grace, grace. Nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible says He's mercy, 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 
But we do know all those are true about the Son of God. But it does say that He's holy, holy, holy this morning. He is, my friend, a pure, a pure substitute for you and I. But not only Paul, Peter mentions that He's a pure substitute. But he also mentions he's a precious sacrifice with the precious blood of Christ. The word precious, it means here more than what we mean when we use it. We see babies that come into the world and uh, we always make statements that isn't that baby precious? We use the term of endearment. But here Peter is saying he's not using the term as of endearment. Here Peter is saying that word precious means that it is of great value. Peter may be saying I may be an old man now but I still know wealth when I see it. And there's something valuable about the blood of Christ. That precious blood, much greater value than silver or gold. The songwriter said, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunge beneath thy flood. Lose all, lose all thou guilt and stain this morning. I say I'm grateful my friend. I'm grateful my friend for that precious sacrifice of the Lamb of God this morning. You know why there's hope for our children? It's because of His blood. You know why we don't have to bow down to the whims of this world? You know why we don't have to hold hands with with the court justices of our land? I'll tell you why. Because of His blood this morning. His blood cleanses us from all sin this morning. I'm telling you, Simon Peter said, He's a sin bearer just for you. He's not only a pure substitute, but Simon Peter says He's a precious sacrifice. But then Simon Peter mentions He's a preordained Savior. Uh, Peter said, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Time out right here. Calvary was no slip up. Calvary was no uh uh-oh. Calvary was, I don't know what I'm going to do there. I want you to know before there was ever a star that twinkled at night time, and before the sun ever shined in the daytime, and the moon shined at night, before there was ever a river, a creek, or an ocean, before there was ever a hill, a valley, or a mountain, there in the mind of God, God knew that His only begotten Son one day would go to the cross and carry your sins and my sins that you and I may have everlasting life. Now, I I, I like the song. We sing the song. We sometimes sing when He was on the cross. I was on his mind. But may I say, can we step back just a little further? Long before there was a cross, there was going to be a Savior. And sinners was on his mind long time before he ever went to the cross. Simon Peter said that he is a sin bearer. He is a sin bearer just for you. He said he was manifested in the last times for you this morning. Oh, may somehow or another God drill in our hearts that He died for you. May somehow or another God put in our hearts that you was on His mind. May somehow or another we get a hold of this this morning that He died for you. He died for you. He died for you. Hey, Peter said that He's a sin bearer just for you this morning. Aren't you glad of that? Not only Peter said that He's a sin bearer 
just for you. Notice our next text in chapter 5 and verse number 7. He said, casting all your care upon Him. For He cares for everybody. That's not what He said, is it? And He does care for everybody. Casting all your cares upon Him. Because He cares for those over in Ethiopia. And He does, but that's not what He says. He said, casting all your care upon Him because He careth for you. See, Simon Peter said that He's a sin bearer just for you. And now, Simon Peter is saying that He is a burden bearer just for you this morning. The, the last chapter uh, is a chapter, verse chapter 5, uh, of exhortation. Uh, he has encouraged others to submit themselves to the elders. He has encouraged the pastors to feed the flock. He has encouraged humility here in chapter 5. He told them about the God of all grace that will help them in their hour of trial. But then in verse number 7, he personalizes his word again. And he said, Casting all your care upon him, because he careth for you. I think sometimes you and I think we can handle our burden. Sometimes we feel like that, that uh, uh, we just uh, uh, postpone this thing about casting our burdens uh, upon Him. Sometimes we think that we can handle it. But I want to tell you this morning, at our very best, we are no match for life. At our very best, you cannot handle life. You cannot handle burdens. You cannot handle trials. That's the reason Peter said, casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. And my friend, the only way to do all things through Christ which strengthens us, my friend, it's through Christ that we get our help. Somehow or another this morning, I do not know how, I wish I could say number one, two, and three, and whammo, it's done, abracadabra, it's over with. But somehow or another this morning, we've got to get our burdens on Him. Notice in that verse the shoulders of our burden bearer. He said, casting all your cares upon Him. That indicates the shoulders of our burden bearer. I, I know sometimes we, we, we hear the, the sad stories of our Lord. We hear how that He was beaten and how that He was bruised and, and uh, how that He had to carry that cross all the way up. My friend of Golgotha's hill and uh, sometimes, my friend, uh, we, we hear about all of that. But I want to tell you this morning, my friend, uh, don't let what you hear about Christ keep you from laying your burdens on Him. I want to tell you, He can handle it. My friend, one day the government is going to be on his shoulders and if he can handle the government, he can handle your burden. He can handle my burden this morning. I'm telling you, regardless of what kind of burden you may be under this morning, somehow, some way, I don't know, but we've got to get that burden off of us and somehow or another get that burden on him. I wish that I knew exactly how to do that but my friend most of the time it's a process involved several years ago I was diagnosed with a kidney disease my uh, 
I don't have one now. I lost one kidney. And the one that I do have now it operates about 48%. And uh, I'm grateful that it operates that much. But I remember many years ago when I was first diagnosed with a kidney disease. What my disease is, is my kidney does not filter protein. And that protein crystallizes. And uh, it produces kidney stones. Am I talking to anybody at that all? You ever had one of those stones? It's awful. I've been, well, not blessed, but I've had about 30 of those things. And I'll tell you, it's awful. But I remember, I remember going to the specialist and I remember I wanted some answers and I was worried about my condition. My children were smaller then. And uh, the doctor said, the only thing I can do is recommend you to go to Duke Hospital, Duke, Durham, North Carolina. We went to Durham, North Carolina and I, I talked to a doctor. I forgot his name there. and We talked just a little while and, and uh, the very last thing he told me when I was 41 years old, the very last thing he told me and my wife is, what you got's incurable. And he said, probably five years be it. So, well, it wouldn't have bothered me. It about killed me. I didn't have the faith. I still don't have faith to hear bad news like that. Neither do you. But I remember... I remember battling that. I remember talking to the Lord. I remember saying, Dear God, I want to raise these children. Dear God, I, I want to do this. And God, I want to do that. And I know what it is to carry the burden yourself. But one evening at my prayer time at my church, I don't understand it. I've been praying over there while I used to pray at and And I'm not saying this to you to um, uh, feel sorry for me. But I remember so well crawling all the way from there. And of course our communion table is a little different than that. I remember getting under that communion table. Remember just like it was yesterday. I remember getting in a ball under that table and I said, oh God, somehow or another you're going to have to help me Somehow or another, Lord, you're going to have to encourage me. I don't know what I need to get done. But I do know one thing. I cried out to God only I don't know how long I cried out to Him. But a few minutes later, I crawled out of that side. I don't know what happened between there and there. It happened under there. But somehow or another, God gave me victory over what I had, and I'd reached a conclusion. If that's your will, I guess I'll just have to accept it as your will. And, and, uh, but I'm grateful that God had other things in store for me down the road. That's been 20-some years ago, and God's let me live, see my children get saved, see them get married, and I'll start seeing my grandchildren to get saved. I'm telling you, I don't know how to tell you. I don't know how to explain it. But in life, there's going to be times that we're going to have to get it off of us and get it on Him. Peter said, cast Him. All your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. He not only emphasized, i got to hurry, the shoulders of our burden barrier, but He emphasizes the size of our burden barrier. I like sport program, not all of them. I, I could give you, I wouldn't give you a nickel for tennis. I don't like tennis. You may be a tennis fan. I'm not. I'm not. And um, but I, but I like programs like that. You remember that program used to come on the strongest man contest. It's amazing, wouldn't them guys? I'm telling you, they they take their teeth and pull a locomotive. You've seen them do it, haven't you? Oh, well, they did do it. I mean, they'll sit down and get their feet on that brace and get a rope tied to the train and put that rope in their mouth and they pull their head back and, 
and you say, my goodness gracious, what kind of strength is that? I've seen them do them. I've seen them carry refrigerators up big hills. But do you know that everything they do has a limit? But see, Jesus has no point of collapse. He's saying, casting all you care upon Him. When it comes to His size this morning, He's much more than a Goliath. He's the God of heaven and earth. He spoke everything, and everything, my friend, we see now is because of Him. He sustains it, keeps it in motion. The size, the size of our burden. Barry Preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. He does. Preacher, you just don't know. My whole world's fell apart. Well, I know he knows about it. And I'm glad, my friend, that our burdens are no problem for him to carry. He is a burden bearer. I'm telling you just for you this morning. Then there's the sympathy of the burden bearer. He careth for you. Isn't that wonderful? He careth for you. He careth for you. Over how many people? Seven billion people in, a, uh, in the world. I may be wrong about that. But aren't you glad out of seven billion people, He cares about you. He cares about you. The sympathy, the sympathy of our burden bearer. Hey, listen to me this morning. He cares. He cares for you. Casting all you care upon Him. Because he can handle it? Well, that's not so. That is so. He can handle it. But that's not the emphasis of our text. Casting all our cares on him because he's bigger than we are. All that's so. But that's not the emphasis of this verse. But casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. He sympathizes. He is touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Others may not know the depth of your sorrow. Others may not sense the heaviness of your load. But I'm telling you, there's support for every believer. There's support for every burden. There's support, my friend, for every battle this morning. There's one who is seated at God's right hand, and He cares for you this morning. Simon Peter says He's a sin bearer just for you. That's big, isn't it? That's amazing, isn't it? But Simon Peter says not only He's a sin bearer for you, but Simon Peter says He's a burden bearer for you. So, preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. I know I don't. Preacher, you don't, you don't know what's, what, what I'm battling. I, I don't know. But I do know he's touched by the feeling of our infirmities. When you can't explain to nobody how you feel, he knows how you feel this morning. And Simon Peter said, he's a burden bearer just for you. Aren't you glad this morning? There's one, I don't, I say it, pre, brother, I don't know how to do it. But I'm glad there's one that's available for you and I. Somehow or another, it can get our burden off of us and get our burden on Him. He's a burden bearer just for you. Finally, this morning, and I'm done, in 1 Peter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His abundant mercy, He hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. <laughs> He's a sin bearer just for you. He's a burden bearer, just for you. 
And Simon Peter said, I want to leave one more thing with you. He's a deed bearer just for you. He says to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for we could never afford to buy what He has for us. We have the promise and the Holy Spirit bearing witness on the inside that the day is coming to see that He has a place marked off just for you. <laughs> Whoever thought that He would have thought of you. He's a sin bearer just for you this morning. A burden bearer. I'm glad he can carry the burdens of the whole world. But that's not what Simon Peter says. He says he's a sin bearer just for you. A burden bearer. He's a deed bearer just for you. I will not deal with it. Verse 4, he talks about his, his incorruptible place. That simply means it's not cheaper. It won't get any cheaper. Time won't affect it. It's an undefiled place. I tell you, everything around us is defiled. Now our land, I tell you, so much crime and sin and wickedness, but a land that can never be defiled, never be contaminated. It's a holy place. It's an undefiled place. It's, a, it's an unfading place. We're going to a place where the roses never fade. I've got reservations in another country. And there are some things I will forget about when I leave this world. I'll forget about the temptations that I've feared, the troubles that I've faced, the thoughts that I've fought, the tears that I have felt. When I get over yonder, there's the Savior that I will exhort. There's the saints I will embrace. There's the scenes that I will enjoy. And then there's the suffering that I will escape this morning. Sinner, you don't have to live under that load of sin this morning. He's a sin bearer just for you. Christian, saints of God, you don't have to mire down in your burden this morning. We can give it to Him. He careth for you this morning. For you and I, the saved, don't give up. I'm telling you, don't worry about what's going over, uh, going on over the seas. You don't have to be consumed with fear. Let the whole world blow up. I've got reservations on the other side. Just for you. Just for you. Let's pray, Father. I